Today, I'm going to talk about the exciting topic of data discovery. Uh, it's a hot topic right now, and it's all about how much can I discover what I don't know about my data. So I'm going to show you an example, shrink myself out of the way. What I've done here is on this particular day in my timeline of loading data, I've cleared all rules and all knowledge of this data set. And you might have a file that looks something like this. Just lots of data, lots of different types, lots of different formats. And this could be in a database, this could be in a file, this could be anywhere, and you want to know what you don't know about it. So let's run one. To keep it really quick, what I'm going to do is just turn semantic on and hit run. Now, while that's running, what uh, is more common to do in the app is to click edit and use the drop down menu and turn the semantic discovery feature on. But in this case, uh, I'm going to keep it super quick. Let's jump in and see over here. Um, if the job is running, it looks like it is, it kicked off in the job tool. So that looks great. And I'm now going to peek in on that run and let's bring that over here. And I can see that it looked at this schema and now it's doing a best match algorithm across all of the columns. And it's doing some really intense analysis about interrogating the fields and what's in those fields. Uh, and trying to come up with data classes or semantic labels of what they are. And what that would help me with is we know that in the past, we've been really good at this section here called observable rules or technical rules. And that I already have all of my null checks in place. That's out of the box. I already have all my type checking in place. I already have all my unique range of values in place. All of my technical rules, analytics, observations are going to be here um, from the beginning of time. But I want to learn more about the semantics and data classes of this data set. So let's refresh this page. I think the job has been done. I see it went from a 97 to a 36. And as I scroll down, I can see that it identified this as a QSIP. That's a financial instrument. It's usually a product identifier. This date is a number. So really interesting. It still found out that it's a date, even though it's not marked as a date and it has no formatting characters that would have told us that it is, but it is. And that helps us validate this column. Um, I can see that this date is actually a string, but also a date. And uh, that's pretty impressive to me that it was able to figure that out. This is a number, but somebody put it in my file as a string because it has a percent. And the tool was smart enough to even identify that this is a percent field. It's also going to help me validate it later here as I add more validation. Uh, email address. And then in addition to that, I got a materially non-public sensitive label. Uh, really exciting to see that so that I know I'm not only getting validation, uh, discovery, and enforcement, but also now sensitive identification. This is an employment number, so a federal tax ID. Here I can see a credit score, name, gender, phone. And interestingly enough, it identified that the, this was a plain text password that was in the file. I didn't know about that. It's really good. It brought it to my attention because I would not want plain text passwords in a file that I'm processing. It not only encrypted it on the back end, identified what it is, labeled it as PII, wrote a protection enforcement against it, but also masked it here on the UI so that I'm not exposing it any further. And I can see that it did that for something called SSN and even something called SOC, which turned out to be social security numbers. So super cool. We can't hide them in uh, you know, fields that are named incorrectly. Here we see URLs, times, and zip codes. So in addition to discovery now, and in addition to this tab, I could click into the rules tab and now see break records of all the cases where the thing that was discovered is not matching or conforming to that pattern. I'm going to pick on one here. So if I drill in, I can see that there was a break record. And this one's really interesting because I didn't know this. This is a federal tax ID, an employment number, which is an EIN. And while this is a valid format, they cannot start with zero. So it was even smart enough to figure out that this one is invalid. Uh, hope this was exciting around the topic of data discovery and enforcement. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.